Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of the GLP Report podcast. This week we have another special guest, Claire Jenkins. You may know her as the 1999-2000 ambassador, but her career spans so much more. Uh, we'll discuss her beginnings at the resort, her ambassador year, um, and some lesser known roles of hers, like being the voice of the resort. You may have heard her across the park during your visits. Um, we'll also talk about her latest achievement, creating the special activities department at Disneyland Paris, which makes custom uh, memories for the guests. Uh, and today being International Women's Day, we'll also discuss uh, her career as a woman and the importance of female leaders. Um, so here's our interview with Claire Jenkins. We have a very special guest today on the show. Uh, she has been with uh, Disneyland Paris for many years and she has such an amazing career. We thought it would be really interesting uh, to, to have her today uh, to discuss what she's been up to and, and all the stories that she has lived through along the years. And um, we'll also talk about Women's Day because today is International Women's Day. So today we'll welcome Claire Jenkins. Hello, Claire. Hi. Hi, everyone. Um, and hi. I also have with me Jeff from DLP Town Square. Hello. And Kat is joining us from the USA. Hi. Hi. Um, so, Claire, you've had such a you have such an interesting career. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about how it all started? When did you start at Disneyland Paris or your Disney? And um, and what what were you doing? How did you how did you start? Right. So, how long do we have? <laughs> <laughs> we have as long as you want. <laughs> I've been here a few years. So, um, well, I was born and raised five minutes from the resort. So it was kind of the obvious place uh, for me, like being a huge Disney fan, you know, throughout my childhood, my entire family, and going as much as we could to the previous center outside, you know, outside of what was going to be the resort. Um, we had no idea. Personally, my family would never been to a Disney resort before. So it was a very first experience for me. And as soon as I went there in my late teens um I was completely convinced and you know I knew I wanted to work there I just loved the place so much and it was only the previous center <laughs> um so my parents were kind of concerned because I hadn't done any studies or anything yet so they were like whoa 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 wait a bit you know and uh, and so literally as soon as I could um I applied for a job so that was back in 1993 my very first experience, I was a student uh, working part time, um, going up to the first anniversary, the atmosphere and everything was just crazy for, um, you know, uh, the teenager that I was and uh, growing up in a small village. Um, and it was uh, overwhelming. I. I joined, like so many of um, my fellow cast members, when you talk with everyone throughout the world, um, I had a six month contract and I thought that was it, you know, and towards the end of my contract, I remember walking in costuming, walking in the park, just, you know, taking everything in for these last couple of days and I'm still here almost 30 years after. <laughs> So um, that's kind of crazy. And I started in attractions, Fantasyland, Snow White. <laughs> I still have on me all the time and Dumbo. And to this day, Fantasyland is still my favorite land. <laughs> wow. How was, how was the previous center? We, as fans, we, uh, we see photos of it, but uh, obviously... I don't think any of us or very few of us have had a chance to visit it. It sounds super exciting. The design was really cool. And, and um, how, how was it inside? So, like I said, I remember going there several times and, um, and also like having no experience of any other resorts before in my personal life. I had no idea what to expect. And, and just, you know, walking in and that's what really struck me was the cast members working there. They all had, you know, the little badge with the different flags of the different languages that they spoke. 
And I was like, oh my God, they can speak so many languages, all of these people, you know, it was crazy. And everyone was charming and smiling and, you know, like the Disney standard, but I was discovering this entire world and it was crazy. And of course there was this huge model and then you would go in and it was, you know, a real Disney experience. Then you would go in a room, watch a movie of what the resort was going to be. And like I said, I grew up outside of the resort. So luckily, you know, my parents were Disney fans and we were Disney fans, uh, but we had so many people around us were totally against, you know, the resort. So it was kind of, well, you know, it was, we, at one point we had no idea if it was going to go all the way through or not, you know, this was, you know, we were concerned, but, um, and then you would leave that um, movie experience and walk into a store <laughs> like you do, you know, in attractions. And we're like, this is so well thought out, you know, and this is so clever. And of course we would buy things each time we would go. And, and what amazed me too, as a cast member now and what attracted me at, at the time was that I would go one day and realize that one person would greet me and the next day I would go and that person would be sweeping the floor, you know? Um, I was like, hang on, they, they do all these different jobs and, you know, uh, they're so agile and, you know, it's not just one person sweeping, one person welcoming guests and they do everything. And somehow that's what attracted me to, you know, seeing how um, multi-talented they were and, and and of course the smiles and and the courtesy was just brilliant. Wow. And you must have visited in 1992, I would guess, right? Um, yeah, it must have been around that time before opening. Yeah. And do you do you remember what the sort of the spark was that that the kind of the moment that was like I have to work here? Oh, really? I think from the first time I went there, because obviously they were advertising what the resort was going to be but you could see what the cast members roles were too. And, you know, um, I was, you know, in my 15, 16, when I was going there for the first time. And, and I was like, oh yeah, of course you can work there. You know, it's not just a place that you visit, there'll be actual people working there. And, um, and I thought, I, I just wanted to join this beautiful team of cast members, you know. I was, that's what really attracted me at first. We'll talk about more later, but you've, um, you're talking about how cast members do everything and you have literally done almost everything at the resort. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so after, after your contracts, um, you said, you know, you thought it was the end, but it wasn't. So then uh, how, did, how did your career evolve after that? So I was, um, as I said, I joined as a part-time cast member only working weekends. And then, you know, shortly after that, it was the summer holidays. And they said, would you care to work full-time for the holidays? And I was like, oh yeah, great. Of course I would. And then, you know, one thing led to next. And, but like I said, I was still young then. So I didn't, you know, I, I was taking the equivalent of my A-levels uh, in France and, uh, and again, my parents said, well, you need to do something else with your life. Working in attraction is great, but we want you to do some studies. And I was like, how am I going to get away with this? You know, and the wonderful thing is um, it was around that time that we're starting to develop in France, you know, the internship when you pass a degree, but at the same time you work for a company. And that was the very, very beginning of this. And literally I was part of the first promotion to ever do that at Disney and there was only seven of us when you think now we welcome every year like hundreds or maybe thousands of students I don't, I don't have the figures but um so I was like hang on you know I can still work at Disney and I can please my parents and you know have some sort of education so so I went for this so that was for two years uh, and then again I was lucky at the end of that I got offered a permanent contract um, so all in all, the, I mean, this took a few years. So I signed my permanent contract in 96. And, um, and yes, yeah, so since 96, I've been permanent working full time. <laughs> Over the time you've been at Disneyland Paris, 
Uh, how do you feel the roles and opportunities for women have evolved? I, I can say, I, I know there's been a shift um, these last few years, I would say, just when the entire world sort of woke up around this topic, you know, but um, I must say that at least Disneyland Paris, because that's the place that I know, um, has always been a very diverse environment. And I've always been surrounded by female leaders throughout my career at different levels. But um, again, like I said, my very first day at Snow White, I was welcomed by my female lead. Then I had great team leaders and managers and et cetera, et cetera. So I've, I've always had in my close environment, um, female leaders that I could look up to. So it was, to me, it was never a question of this is unattainable for me, you know, I could never get to that position because there was already this representation. But I mean, it has again improved these last few years, but they've, they've, women have always always been out there at Disneyland Paris. And so um, in, in 1999, I mean, just, I guess the year before, uh, something amazing happened. You became ambassador of Disneyland Paris. That's uh, how, how did it all happen? How do you become an ambassador? I mean, we know a little bit now about the recruiting process, but I mean, back yeah. then it must have been quite new. It was. Um, obviously, there, there hadn't been that many ambassadors before. And uh, so back in the day, it was one person and it was a one year um, assignment. And, you know, I thought I should I should go for it. I had worked during my crazy experience. I had worked for a year at Disney University doing uh, the Disney tradition that every cast member uh, do when they join the company. And and that has taught me so much about how to talk in public and, you know, how to behave in front of a crowd. Um, and I thought, well, this could be the, the next thing for me, you know. After my experience at Disney Tradition, I went back to my uh, location, which was uh, guest relations at the time. And I thought, why not go for it? So I did, and I actually did the year before I got elected, but I, I went to the final but I didn't get selected that year. And I thought, well, you know, I tried, it's not for me and that's it. You know, I was lucky enough to be in the final. So I kind of forgot all about it. And I became really, really good friends still to this day with the ambassador who got elected that year in 98, Ilaria. And, um, and she said, you have to apply again for next year, you know, and, and again, my, my great leaders at the time really pushed for me to apply again that second year. And I thought, you know, now I know the process and I know what they're expecting, you know, and, and had done through, you know, I've been through all the tests and, and interviews and I thought, oh, okay, let's go, you know, and try a second time. And, and it was the year for me. So I was lucky the second time around. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there were some pretty incredible things that happened in 1999 that were sort of, I think, as fans, we see as legendary events. Um, do you have a fondest memory or memories of your time as an ambassador? Yeah, of course, like you said, there were uh, events. And like for for one, we um, inaugurated Honey, I Shrunk the Audience, which was like the big thing that year. Um, and I was so happy because I had gotten to experience uh, the attraction in the US. So, so that was that was great. And um, so, you know, going up to the um, to the inauguration was something completely crazy. And um, and of course, you know, all the work with um, what is CSR now, which was used to be uh, community relations and, and the volunteers was um, something that was really humbling and, and I just loved doing. Um, I, I wasn't a mother at the time. So working with uh, children in need or sick, you know, was um, quite moving. And I, I think it would be much harder for me to do now as, as you know, as a mum. But um, to this day, there are still kids 
that I've met all these, you know, all these years ago that I still remember very vividly to this to this day. How was the party for the millennium? Actually, it was it was sort of. Um, do you remember what was the what was the plan? What was the big? Yeah, the the, um, the the greatest thing was that 360 degrees fireworks, which was uh, absolutely crazy, and the parades, and and uh, we would serve champagne on Main Street to the guests, and um, it was just the atmosphere, uh, you know, all the cast members, and it was very very special. I mean, I had worked and I have worked since, you know, on New Year's Eve several times, but that particular one was very special and I remember we were sort of you know kind of concerned because um people you know really wanted to celebrate this you know entry into the new millennium so there was this whole thing of our cast members going to be okay working that night you know they're not celebrating with their friends and family and and but I mean I can tell you all the people there that night the atmosphere was something else um and, you know, and the guests, obviously, everyone knew that we were going through history. So, so that was fantastic. I yeah. remember during the, we did some research for the Christmas episode for the last year. And I remember seeing videos of the Millennium Celebration. It was just it's one of those moments that you kind of wish that you were there. Yeah. And I, during the fireworks, I was actually on one of the roofs on Main Street. So oh, wow. I could actually see the real 360 degree it was crazy you would turn like all around and there was something happening and you, you know this sort of communion when you know there might be a guest you know at the hotel santa fe or there might be a guest at the disney village or wherever they were on the resort they were seeing the same thing so that was and i must say i was blessed because that was my last day as ambassador and to end in that way was i could have i couldn't have dreamed of something better than that Maybe maybe it's a good thing you didn't get the first time around because you kind of got the better year. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So you um, mentioned that you worked with different groups like the volunteers and also like the task force for the um, millennium. So what type of opportunities were you given as an ambassador to reach out to other cast members and learn more about their roles, even though you'd already gone through so many of them? Uh, you have events that are planned way ahead of time. Like I said, uh, only I shrank the audience inauguration. That was on my calendar months and months ago, you know. And uh, But other things you just plan as you go along. And, and being a cast member from operation, you know, I really wanted to keep that and, and still remain close to the site and to all the different locations and, and stay close to my uh, fellow cast members. And so I planned so many um, show times. Uh, unfortunately, this was pre uh, mobile phones <laughs> era. <laughs> so unfortunately, I haven't got that many pictures because it was kind of, you know, you had to bring your camera along. And so, but I did so many show times and I, um, I thought, you know, use my voice and and go to places where I wasn't particularly expected to go to. Um, and looking, you know, the, the previous ambassadors and where they'd done their show times. And, you know, everyone would do the obvious thing, like you would go to one attraction, you would go to one hotel front office or, you know, things like that. And I thought, let's try and do something different. and. Like the Disney Village was the place that I knew the least as a cast member because I had never worked there. And I thought, I need to go to Disney Village straight away, you know, one of my first show times. And, and I went to visit the custodial team. And it wasn't something that you would automatically, automatically think an ambassador would do first thing. Uh, again, mentality were a bit different. And you would you know, expect something a bit more glamorous, if I can say that. And, and I thought, you know, I don't care. I just, I just want to go and, and meet other cast members and meet a different job. And, you know, and, you know, so I, I did things like that, um, a, a bit different. And, and I love doing it. And just the opportunity to meet any team and discover any jobs. And that's, 
that's something that really stays with you afterwards and that I've used in my experience in the future, you know. To this day, ambassadors and even executives do showtimes. And it's always so exciting for us when we see, you know, Joe or anyone else who, uh, who is yeah. just behind the counter somewhere or, you know. Yeah. It's so, it's so fun to see, uh, to see you guys just go and do that. And it also, I feel, it also shows, you know, the same thing that you were saying from the very first preview center is that no one is really you know, stuck in, in their way. And, um, and it's great to see that people can have the choice or the opportunity to experience everything because obviously the more you know about all the different roles, the more you can, you know, do your job well, I think. That's um, true. And there's, there's another role that you've been doing since that year and that you're still doing today. <laughs> and people might not know, but you... Uh, are the voice of the resort, one of the voices of the resort. You've been doing park announcements since 1999, I believe. Yes. Um, how, how did this happen and how has it continued till today? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, yes, it's, it's all started when I was ambassador. Um, I, we had... Um, uh, we had this sort of hotline that you would call, uh, cast members would call, and we had daily information. Again, like I said, this was pre, you know, <laughs> pre-cell phone era. So, um, um, so cast members would call that hotline and get info of the day, you know, like weather forecast, what useful tips for cast members the, you know, how many guests are we expecting that day? You know, it's just stuff like that. So that was in French and English, and I would do that as an ambassador. And um, working up to Honey, I Shrunk the Audience, um, the marketing team working on the concept of this great inauguration had this idea of having huge um, screens a display throughout Discoveryland and and the hub um, to inform the the invitees of the event that you know the inauguration was about to happen and there was this whole script and and you know we have six official languages French English Spanish Italian German and Dutch and and one of the marketing guy it was kind of a bet he said would you be okay doing that in six languages and it was kind you know, of a, a question he was automatically expecting a no as an answer. And I said, yeah, I guess I could. And he was like, are you kidding me? He was like, how many languages do you speak? And I was like, well, I only speak three-ish, you know. Um, but I've always been really, really good with phonetics. And so that's how it started. So they had, they tested me, obviously. And I had, um, people coaching me in the different languages that I had no idea how to talk <laughs> never yeah, I never spoke these languages before and so and that's how it started really for that inauguration and it's been going on ever since and and it's yeah it's crazy that I still do it <laughs> uh, and do you have some favorite announcements that you've done in the past things that are maybe slightly unusual especially events uh, just some of your favorites yeah, um, it's kind of, you know, as the general announcements like for park opening or park closing or parades or shows is always kind of the same intention, same mood, you know, it's always cheerful. And and so that's to me, that's easy to do because it's kind of always, you know, it's like copy and paste, literally, <laughs> you know, Um but there's been, um, so mainly for events, obviously, when we do something unique. And I love when I'm working with a show director and they say, oh, you need to take this very robotic voice or you need, you're going to be this, you know, um, uh, this fairy needs to be really mysterious. And, and I find myself acting like I've never done before, you know, and I've had the occasional, and. Um, Quite recently, actually, I've, I've um, um, done announcements in Russian and some in Portuguese, which I'd never done before. So that was kind of scary, um, especially the Russian one. Um, so I had a, a, um, 
very kind uh, Russian cast member from City Hall helping me and had recorded her voice on my cell phone, you know, like one syllable, you know, after the next and 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 then, you know, at a normal speed and I would listen now for two weeks on and even my family in the car, my kids were like, mom, what is this? You know? <laughs> and I have to practice, I have to hear this here good, so I can copy it. And apparently I did an okay job. It was for a wedding proposal and apparently the girl said yes. So <laughs> <laughs> that's good. <laughs> and, and how is it sort of, I guess you're used to it now, but when you first went into the resort and you heard your voice like echoing through those speakers, what did that feel like? It, it, it is strange. And I must say it is still strange to this day. It's kind of like I... I know it's me, but I don't particularly recognize my voice. Um, and it, it's funny because um, my my parents are just super proud of this. Like my family is super proud of this. And whenever we would visit the park with them, they would just brag to anyone who was around like, this is my daughter, this is my daughter. You know? <laughs> and so that's funny. And my kids, they're 10 and eight. And so ever since they've been babies, they've been going to the park. So they know it's mom talking through the microphone, you know. So when we visit with someone, they go, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, mom, it's you. It's you. You know, don't brag about it. <laughs> they're not impressed at all. <laughs> That's funny. Do you do you ever have people who don't know and just walking around with you and they're and they're surprised to hear your voice? Yeah, um, like I, I don't particularly. That's not my. That's one thing I do outside of my real job, you know. Right. So um, I don't I don't mention it particularly. Uh, people know or they don't know if you like. Um, so whenever I have a new boss or someone uh, you know who I work closely with. Um, we're working in the walking in the park and an announcement would come up and you know I don't say you know what this is me talking I don't do that so but then someone in the crowd might you know and so it's funny like my actual boss <laughs> when she heard she was like what is this really you and now she's the one telling other people whenever we're in the park you know, she's like you know it's Claire actually doing that so that's that's so funny <laughs> so typically around the world the Disney resorts the park announcements tend to be male voices um were you one of the first female announcement voices in Disneyland Paris um I, I think I was at Disneyland Paris and but again our um, our resort and our parks are, are so different in the sense that um, I don't think there is such a need in other resorts. Uh, what I mean is um, well there could be a female voice but th the fact that we have both here is um, I think it's because we have so many different official languages um, in the US, they do their announcement in English and they might do some in Spanish, you know, in Asia, they would do their own languages, um, uh, whether it's Japanese or Mandarin or, uh, but here, because we have the six languages, some of these announcements are really, really long. Um, so of course, guests focus on what they understand mainly, but I think if you had only one voice doing the entire thing like it does happen every now and again it's a bit long so it was kind of more of a, a a rhythm thing you know and to break the sequence a bit have female male female male or if you had two different voices that would work too whether male or female i guess um so i think that's what interested them back in back in the in the day i started to just to break that monotony of having just one voice even though it's and happy voice. You know? um, and so after after your ambassador year, you joined the special events team and you even created a new department called special activities. Uh, so could you tell us about, you know, this sort of next phase of your career and which is something completely different once again? Yeah, um, I was, um, so this was a few years ago now, I sort of lose track of time, but I literally I'd been back from my second maternity leave and I was done having babies <laughs> I knew I wasn't going away anymore and um, I thought what is 
next for me you know what what can I do with my career now what is the next step for me and uh, I looked how to improve my uh, my role back then and I thought well I was um, lucky enough to talk about uh, implementing Disney special activities here at Disneyland Paris and it got approved and so I was like thrown out you know uh, uh, out there trying to to put this team together so that took a good three years um but I was on my own doing that and so that that took a while it was a difficult path uh but it was very rewarding and I learned so so much about our company and about the company that had been working for so many years and you know the fact that you can still learn all this um was incredible um, like I said, it was hard, but it was very rewarding, and um, and it took three years to to put together. So it was kind of crazy. What what kind of um, what kind of uh, product does uh, special activities do for for people who don't know the the department? Well, so it's it's evolved now because literally I was I implemented the activity, and then um, worked with the team for a few months and then I moved to another job so the idea was and Disney special activities exists in other resort Disney resorts so it was like how do we create a one-stop shop for people who will want a personalized experience and of course we had and we always we've always had the VIP tours or the guided tours and it was a case of what else can we create to help those, um, I knew there was a very, very strong demand about wedding proposals, about engagement, about uh, bachelor parties, you know, all of that, um, that didn't exist in the catalog per se, you know? So it's like, how do we address um, all of these different ch- subjects? And and I mean, the, the, the team is still there and they're doing a fantastic job. And, you know, we've, um, we're working, uh, having, you know, the fairy tale weddings here too. And, and there's so many things that can be done. And so they're, they're still working uh, and developing that activity, which is great. With all of the things you listed just now, what are some of your proudest achievements in the activities department? So, so many things, uh, but I think the, um, uh, to me, it was like having my third baby, literally, because I'd been carrying that project for three years, that was long, um, and like I said, I was on my own, of course, I was helped, you know, with the IT team, and I was working with the merchandise team and all of this, but at the end of the day, I was on my own, in my office, you know, working at it, and, you know, I remember going and knocking on doors here and there, like going to see IT. First time I went to see them, knocked on their door and said, you know, I'm creating this new team and I need your help. And they were like, what? You know, why is she going on about? And um, so for three years, it was a, a crazy ride. And closer to the end, I had an assistant who had come on board to to, to help me. and. I think that the the strongest thing I will remember is that night we were closing the office, knowing that the next day uh, almost 30 cast members would come on board to join my team, Um, made it all so real, you know, after having worked three years on this project and finally being the day before was you know you'd think oh my god so this is really happening now they're all coming tomorrow and I'm gonna have to tell them what to do and so that I think that's one very strong memory having this team come on board. Um, So have you felt that in recent years uh, women's representation in the resort has uh, increased and maybe there's some schemes for example uh, where you're able to mentor women in order to enhance their career and progress throughout the company the representation has definitely changed and evolved uh but like i said 
I mean, we've always had female at Disney and female leaders. So it was um, never a question of, of uh, me feeling left out as a female because I never felt that way. Um, but obviously, I mean, the representation has just become stronger and stronger over the years. And like, you know, we've had our, our two uh, presidents, the, the, the current one and the, the previous one were female. So um, I, I think it resonated so much, uh, you know, for other people. And as when I was ambassador, I was lucky to, to go to the two resorts in the state and back at that time, they were both led by female presidents. So again, it was never a question of, I thought it could never happen in Paris. It's just a case of it hadn't. Uh, the way a, a female leader will work is, is so different. Not a question whether it's better or not, you know, it's just, it's just different. And I am so lucky to be working close to them and, and, and to see them lead all of us cast members and and where the resort is going is really really uh inspiring thank you so much um uh, we we're so grateful that you could uh join us and um it's also such an inspiring story such an inspiring career so thank you and and thank you for all the work that you've done and you are doing for disneyland paris you know as fans we always i think so grateful for every cast members, not only the ones that we can see, but also, you know, people like you who have moved to careers sort of more backstage, but I know you do so much every day for the resort. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And uh, we always, we always end the show with a bit of music. Um, is there any particular song from Disney and Paris or Disney parks that that is very close to your heart. I have a um, favorite song from Beauty and the Beast, but I must say that uh, what I miss the most at the moment, I think like everyone, <laughs> is the parade music. <laughs> Stars on Parade, the latest yeah. one. Yeah, <laughs> all right. And it's funny because they made so many remixes of that song. We've played quite a few versions of it. I don't know if yeah. you've heard all of them. There's a there's a bit of a more Parisian accordion version of it and the classic <laughs> version and all this. Thank you again so much for uh, being on our show. Thank uh, you. And thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Kat. And I also mm -hmm. want to thank um, all the teams at uh, Design Paris Communication for helping us coordinating all of this. Uh, they're always super helpful. So thank you everyone. And uh, here's Stars on Parade. 